Welcome to episode 6, collection 2 of the creative process. Big 80s metal guitar tone day, right here, right now. Hey, we saw what you did last week. Hey cool, thanks for watching. Did you like the acoustic tone? Not with that, to us. What are you talking about? Man, it was like I was on a bathroom tour or something. Well, I figured since your opinions are crap, what was with all the different kitchens? Well, I figured since your brain is cooked... Hey! He's doing it again! Dude, stop that! Okay, that one was pretty funny. So was that one. Today, we're going to turn this... into this. But first, coffee. Love my coffee. We've been talking about the options we're gonna have with the electric guitar in almost every episode. So I thought it would be a good idea right here at the beginning to lay out exactly how I have everything set up with the busing so that we can keep this in mind as we're working through the tones. So we've got our eight guitars. Guitar one is a DI straight, G5N straight, the SM58 and the GCP on the amplifier. Guitar two has all the same stuff. All four of guitar one feed into the left guitar bus. All four of guitar two feed into the right guitar bus, even though I forgot to put that line in. The DI on guitar one feeds into a reverb bus. So does the DI on guitar two, and they are separate reverb buses. Those reverb buses then go up to another reverb bus. Those two reverb buses feed into a single reverb bus, which then feeds up into the main guitar signal along with the left and right groups, which then feeds out to the guitar bus. Why do you have to make everything so complicated? So I can easily make changes to the reverb? You put the amp in the middle of an empty room, you sit up a bunch of mics, reverb! And where do you suggest I do that? The basement? Have you seen my basement? I see your point, carry on. You might wonder why I have four reverb buses here, since the only thing going into this reverb bus is another reverb bus and the same over here. The answer is simple. In my track layout, these two are up with the buses and these two are down with the effects buses. So I can control the volume of the reverb from either end of that slider very easily. I am thinking that that might have been overkill and I might be best to leave these two down here out next time and just go directly up to these two. Setting things up this way gives me a lot of options. It gives me a lot of options on my panning. For example, I can pan all four of these guitars the same, but I don't have to. Same over here. I can blend their levels differently. Also, where do I put the effects? I can put the effects on the individual guitars. I can put the effects up one level on the bus and affect all the guitars. I can put it up here and any effects that I lay in up here are gonna affect both guitars. So the higher I go, the less processing power I'm gonna use, but the more I'm gonna affect. And you'll see that I actually do make use of all these different places where I can put plugins and effects. talk about those five steps. Step number zero. What is your desired tone? Know what tone you're going for before you start twiddling knobs. Step number one. Get your DI tone. DI tone can be edited more than any other tone. It can be sculpted in any way you want. Whereas the other tones already have some effects on them which limits what you can do to them without just trashing them all together. So we're gonna focus on our DI tone first. Step number two, pick your boomer. That's where we're gonna pick out our amp sims. You can literally skip the first three steps. Sure, if you want it to sound bad. 
Just use the sound of the actual amp. Step number three, blend the signals. In other words, put it in a blender. Set your volumes and panning on your individual guitars. Step number four, this is where we're gonna start putting that reverb in. You could just use the sound of the amp. Finally, step number five. We've done steps one through four with the guitar soloed. Now we're gonna throw the guitar in the mix, give it a final listen, and make sure we don't have to slightly adjust or tweak any of our tones to make it good when it's in the whole mix. So first we want to know our sound. We want to know where we're going. We want to have a road map. I have two separate guitar tracks in here that are playing different things or not playing everything at least together for a large portion of the song. So I want those two guitars to have different tones. I picked out two tones for that. My target tone for the guitar that plays most of the time is this. target tone for the guitar that doesn't play quite as much is this. Those are now my reference tracks for my sound. This is a waste of time. No, it's not. Just use my tone. I've got to make it fit in the mix. It sounds fine when we play live. That doesn't mean it sounds good in a recording. Have you heard our live albums? Do we really have to go there again? Those are the sounds I need to go back and compare my sound to as I'm working through them. Remember, we're not going to copy it. I don't want my guitars to sound exactly like those guitars. I just want to get in the same neighborhood, maybe their next door neighbor. In other words, I'm going to use those tones to get inspired to create my tone. Kind of like using a GPS when it can't find the right address, so you put in one that's close. Let's start looking at those DI tones. So the first thing we want to do is get our DI tones. I'm going to do this one guitar at a time. I'm gonna start with the right guitar because it plays more. This is what it sounds like with absolutely nothing on it. Remember, the tone that I'm going for is this. So I've got three effects on here that are gonna help me get there. First thing I put on it was an EQ. Here it is without the EQ. Here it is with the EQ. Then I put a comb filter on it. Here is how it sounds with the comb filter. Here it is with the amplifier. Pretty horrible, huh? I think so. Why bother? Just use my tone. Now let's take a look at that left DI. Here's how it sounds with nothing on it. Throw a phaser on it. And here's how it sounds with the phaser. I'm using the Ignite Emissary as my amp sim. And here's how it sounds with the amp sim on it. And I'm using the NAD IR loader from Ignite Amps as well. And here's how it sounds with all three on it. And that's my DI tones. Now it's time for me to pick my boomers. I want to put amp sims and pretty much only amp sims on the lines that came out of the G5N and went right into the Zoom L20. There's no amp sim on there, so I want to make sure I put one on. On guitar one, I'm just using the NAD IR loader. Here it is without that. Here it is with the IR loader. 
on guitar too. I'm using the Kawasa amplification light. Here it is without the amp sim. Here it is with the amp sim. There's some debate about using an amp sim versus an IR loader or possibly using both. Amp sim speaker emulator above. How about you use a microphone and a competent recording engineer? Honestly, I mess around with plugins till I get a tone I like, and then that's what I go with. I might use something different every time. I, I have some standbys that I keep going back to. It's just use what sounds good. Mix with your ears. On these particular tracks, I'm not laying in any other effects because I don't really have to. There, there's really no need to lay other effects in on these tracks. Now I'm gonna use the blender. I've used the blender? What, are you making margaritas or something? Pulled all my levels all the way down and I'm just gonna play the loop over and over again and start bringing the guitars in. I'm gonna bring in guitar one first and then guitar two. I think I'm happy with that blend. Let's check it out on the verse and see how it sounds there. I gotta clean that whole guitar area up a little bit. gonna throw it down well so here it is with the reverb turned off on the reverb track reverb on we want to turn that down quite a bit or just use a microphone 
on the actual amp! But what we want to do is we want to get the whole guitar mix going. And notice that I do have that panned about 50% left, opposite of the guitar that's reverbing. This is the reverb that I have on the right guitar. Alright, so let's listen to that DI channel without the reverb. And then with the reverb. Here are all the guitars with that reverb turned on. And let's hear the whole mix with the reverb turned on. Alright. So we mix the signals, we got the tones, we got our overall guitar tone. Now we need to test it in the mix. And see if I have to adjust. I already know I like it on the verse. Let's hear it on the pre-chorus. That's pretty cool. Actually, that sounds kind of awesome. Yeah, we did a really good job on this. Yeah, sure you did. Because my tone, whatever. Finally on the bridge. Like it, it's a good tone. Now let's hear it in a mix. Now let's hear it in a mix.
What do you think? Is it starting to sound like hair metal yet? Let me know in the comments down below. Come back next week when we finish off that bridge. Remember, if you enjoy the show, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so we can let you know next time we're uploading. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and God bless. Have a great week.